Hello. Now I'm really hoping that I'm live. So I am. Um, I lost everything. This is always the tricky bit when you start because I just need to make sure that I am actually live. So I've got lots of technology going on. So fingers crossed it is live. So bear with me. Fingers crossed. Where are we? Facebook. Hopefully, yes, I think I'm live. Okay, happy days. Brilliant. So I'm just going to give it a, just um, a minute for people to, to join and to be able to actually say hello um, and let me know that you're watching. Fingers crossed. And I've got lots of technolo technology on at the moment, so bear with me. There's there's all types of things going on here. I'll send a picture afterwards so you can see how complicated this actually is <laughs> when you start doing a Facebook Live. Um, so okay. I've Happy got... Days. Oh, no, I'm coming through Brilliant. live on here. So I'm just going to give it just um, a minute for people to... Oh, no. I can hear myself now as well. Right. Okay, but that's good. I'm all live. So what I'm going to try and do is just set up the laptop so hopefully I can read comments because it's a little bit difficult to be able to do um, to read comments on this while I'm doing it live. So just bear with me for the start. And what I might do, just when you think you've got it all set up and I'm just going to do a little bit of a change around. Bear with me. So let me just find everybody on Facebook, fingers crossed. So if you're watching, um, if you can just say hello, let me know you can hear everything, let me know you can see everything. Uh, that would be really, really useful going forward. I'm just going to get this on. Every time you promise you're gonna do everything and then something always happens which slows you down when you get going. So hang on a sec. So I can't see any comments just yet. Let me just scroll along here. Two minutes in. Right, okay. And hopefully this is actually going straight into Dressmaking the Easy Guide group as well. That is a really important thing at the moment. This is the first time that I've done the live straight into the group. And I'm just gonna get that light on as well. Okay. It's always something that doesn't work. What have I done there? Okay, so who can see? Right, okay, fabulous. It looks like you can all see, which is brilliant. So I'm gonna have a little eye, a little eye on the laptop in the comments while I'm here. Brilliant, you can see and hear me. Woo, happy days. So I'll do a little start now that I've got you all watching. Um, my name is Helen Rhiannon and you've probably come across me on the group. And um, for those of you who've been on the group since the beginning, which is only two, two months ago, it's not very long, you would have known myself and you would have known that I've been doing a few Facebook Lives and I've actually um, kind of interacted with you all before now. There's a lot of you who are new, like a lot and a lot and a lot, <laughs> hundreds, if not a couple of thousand who are new, because the group has grown into this absolutely humongous group, which is almost near 6,000 members, which is incredible because Dressmaking the Easy Guide was only actually out, I think, just over two months ago. So obviously this is the book that we're all talking about. And my name is Helen Rhiannon and I am the author of Dressmaking the Easy Guide. So I'll do a very, very little quick introduction to, uh, to just introduce who I am for those of you that are new to to this and to um, it all being live. I am a designer myself and more so specialised in bridal the last couple of years, um, well last 10 years actually, not just couple, and I design and create bespoke bridal wear. I also teach people how to sew and that's been probably the last 15 years and being a designer is the last 20 plus years. And what I have found is that over the years it's really frustrating teaching people how to fit garments when things don't work and things don't always fit as you want them to fit. So what I've been doing is getting aggressively frustrated working with patterns and trying to teach people how to fit them after the garment's made, which is quite a difficult thing to do. So what I decided to do uh, was to approach Search Press after I'd already done one book and I wanted to do a dressmaking book and I wanted to tackle the issue of fit and to make sure that 
that really everything that I've learned on how I work as a designer is actually put into a book. So it's pretty much a course in a book. That's the plan. And what I'm doing within this book is teaching you how I work as a designer and how I would actually create garments for anybody that came to me, where I would start, how I would start with a sample, which is called a toile and then how I progress that into a garment. So hopefully, for those of you that have been up and running, there's, there's so much I'm gonna share with you in this live tonight. And it's just really exciting to see how the group has grown and how many of you have just taken on just the book and just run with it, which is absolutely amazing. So if you've got any, um, any comments, pass them over now. I'm just gonna pop another light on, hopefully. Fingers crossed, bear with me. This might blind me though, if that's gonna work. So hang on a sec. No, that one doesn't work. Never mind. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that one. Anyway, so I'm just going to have a little look at comments. It means I go a little bit off air for a sec here. So who have we got? First time watching, waiting for delivery of the book, which is really good. Um, so we've got people in Northumberland. We've got oh, so many of you watching already, which is brilliant. Let me just have a little look on here. So there's lots of names that I keep seeing, which is, which is brilliant. So there's lots of you that are constantly working and using the book, which I absolutely love. So you've got, hi Helen, it's, I need to have, someone's told me that what I need to have is my other half, I need to have him reading comments and making sure that he actually tells me what people are saying, but I haven't twisted his arm yet. So I'm trying to see comments, oh Jenny in Spain, hello from Cornwall, it's bright enough, brilliant, hi Sue, um, love, love, love your book so far, great feedback, oh Julia, yes that's fabulous, there's lots of lovely, lovely comments, Chelmsford, what I love is that um, the group has just gone worldwide, which I absolutely am blown away, blown away by. It's just gone as far as, I think, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, uh, Cambodia even. I think John in Cambodia. Uh, it's just gone Norway, France, everywhere. So thank you, everybody who has bought the book and who is, is getting involved in this really exciting dressmaking journey. Now, what I plan to do... Now, I won't be able to read comments. So I'm just going to pop that to one side, but at least I know... You are all watching and hopefully I can jump in and ask some questions if I need. I'm really sorry there's a spotlight right behind my head. I'm trying to move that a little bit. But what I have thought to do today is, as well as kind of having a chat with you all, I'd like to just look at a couple of things that people are struggling with. Because obviously with the book, it's quite a new book. It's, um, it's a very different concept. It's very different to just buying a pattern and making a pattern. It is actually something where you're taking it right back to basics and you make a toile to fit you, which doesn't look very pretty. It doesn't look very elegant. It's just very much a mock-up of your bodice and your skirt. And then once you've perfected that, then you run with it. So there's, it's a very different way of working. And obviously there are lots of people that are struggling with different parts of it at the early stages, because it is very new. And I've got lots to tell you about what's going forward from here. So just stick with me on that. But I've got a little list. I've got a list of what I'm going to run through. Um, but I thought what I'd run through first of all is the fact the pre-order. So for those of you that are new, the book came out at the end of June and it was released finally um, by Search Press the end of June. And it pretty much sold out really, really, really quickly, which is absolutely phenomenal. And I don't think anyone saw that it would sell quite as quickly as it did. And then... It went to reprint, some books got sent back from America and it is all very, very exciting. And we're just waiting on uh, the first reprint, which is coming in mid-September. So those of you who've pre-ordered a book, they are coming straight hot off the press from Search Press uh, mid-September. So as soon as I get those, I'll be sending them out. Once they are gone, then there's no more books coming until, when is it, November, but you can then possibly buy on Amazon because they should be having some of the, that shipping, hopefully. So there will be an opportunity to buy the book after them, but obviously you don't get it signed, you don't get the how to set up your sewing machine booklet. Um, but I think the biggest thing as well for me is, is just as the author, it's the best thing in the world when I sell my own book and it's, it's massively exciting. So thank you everybody who is buying direct from me because it's, it's something I've never done in that respect is, is pretty much turn into a bookshop, which is very exciting. And so just thank you everybody for all of your support and for buying into the book and the idea. Um, so as I said, there's there's a handful of books left. I'm hoping I'm just talking to Search Press to see if I can get some more, very, very small amount. I will be at Exeter 
uh, the Creative Craft Show in Exeter in September. So that's a really interesting one to put in your diary and I will have a selection of books to buy then. I'm also going to be in the NEC in November. So if you are looking to come and do a workshop, there are spaces in Exeter to learn how to put in a concealed zip. The dressmaking ones are full. And the NEC, they're going live very soon. So I will post that on the page um, on the group. And if any of you then would like to come and learn and meet me, have a chat, even if you don't do the workshop, come along to the Creative Craft Show in Exeter or NEC. Come and say hello, introduce yourself. If you've made a dress, wear the dress. That'd be fantastic. Um, but there's plenty of opportunities to come and have a chat and I can help you then if there's anything that you are stuck with. Or just say hello, sign a book if you bought it elsewhere. More than happy to do that. The next thing I was just going to mention is that uh, for those of you, again, there's been a question about the Kindle edition. So if you buy the book on, if you buy the Kindle version of the book, obviously you don't have the patterns, you don't have a hard copy of the patterns, but what you can do is download the patterns for free as a digital file. You will then need to print them, um, but you can, if you prefer, you can buy a hard copy for £10 and that's all through Search Press and uh, Bookmarked Hub. So I have posted on that about it, but if anyone's got any questions about a Kindle, please feel free to message and I can let you know, but you just don't have a hard copy of the patterns. Now then, I have got, I'm trying to be all fancy, so I've set up this equipment and we are using this switcher studio this time. So I'm hopefully gonna do some split screening and hopefully answer some of the questions that you fired over when I asked a question this week about what you need help with. So I'm really hoping somehow that I'm going to be able to help some of those of you with questions. So the very first one on my list was, just have a little look. Um, some We've got, a, well, I'll talk through what we're going to look at. So someone asked how to hem a butterfly sleeve. So I'm gonna show you um, my sample and show you what I've done there. Um, taking out gaping, I'm gonna talk through that very briefly. Transfer and alterations. So hopefully we can uh, can touch very briefly on that as well. Um, I've got lots of photos to share and talk through little alterations. Um, neck facings, necklines and facings. Again, I'll talk through that. Wide darts, moving darts, and pretty much everything else I've covered then. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just gonna have a little look. If there are any questions, any comments, it does mean I go off. I should have put the laptop over this side, so. Let me see what's going on here. So lots of NEC. So Deborah, you're joining me at the NEC. That's very exciting. Let me move this over so hopefully you can see. Um, who have we have got? Anyone else coming to the NEC or Exeter? Let me know if you are coming. If you don't book onto the workshops, you, there is a voucher code to get a cheaper entry ticket. So you can do that um, today as I just posted that within the, the group today. Um, it's pretty impossible for me to read all these while they're going. I like Rosie's wave. Hi, Rosie. Um, excellent. So what we're going to look at first then is I'm going to show you the sample. I haven't got everything to hand. Bear with me. You'll see that. But sometimes it's a little bit chaotic. Now, for those of you that don't know, I have a toddler and that is my excuse for most things in life at the moment. So I have a toddler who keeps me extremely, extremely busy and it's obviously school holidays. So as the school holidays come to an end, it will give me an opportunity to be a little bit more organized and hopefully to be able to get this set up in a really good way. So just bear with me. But what I'm gonna do, as promised, I'm going to just show you, uh, answer the question about how to hem a butterfly sleeve. So this is the sample that is from the book itself. So you might recognize this dress. Now this was, again, I'm just gonna keep an eye on questions. Knit and Stitch and Show in Harrogate. Um, not as yet. Alexander Palace. I am looking for next year. I'm looking to see which ones I can do next year. Obviously, the problem being having a toddler means it's a little bit more difficult and he's not in the full-time school yet as well. So bear with me, but I am trying to see what's on next year. So if you've got any events that you particularly love going to, let me know because I'm looking to get those in the diary for next year. Um, I would like to do the Knit and the Stitch Show though. Only an hour away in Exeter. Oh, Sue, not allowed to cancel. No, don't cancel your holiday, whatever you do. Please don't cancel your holiday. Um, Alexandra Palace, London. I would like to come to London. So I, I studied in London and I, I, it's like a second home to me. So I would like to come back up to London. And what else is there? Come to Exeter. Tickets ready and wait. Bridget, make sure you introduce yourself. That would be lovely. 
any scene, going 5th to the 11th. Excellent. So lots of you joining me, which is really good. Okay, so let's show you. This is the butterfly sleeve. Okay, so when you actually see the sleeve, which side? I've got to go all opposite with this. This is quite strange. This is the butterfly sleeve. And what I did in the sample is on the outside, it's just pressed. It is just overlocked and it is turned back. So you can see there, so I've just overlocked and I've actually just pressed it back and stitched it. Now, what I would normally do on my own clothes when I do this kind of sleeve, I would actually do a rolled hem. And this is how disorganized, I thought I had a sample here, but I don't, because I was thinking I was gonna wear it. What I've actually done on my own ones, I've actually put the roll hem foot on the overlocker and I've actually stretched it as I've overlocked, which gives it a, an overlock look, but on a much smaller stitch, much narrower, and that allows you to really to neaten that edge beautifully. And what you would need to do is, I tend to cut a little bit off, so I probably don't do it the correct way, um, but it's a method I was taught a long time ago and it work, works really well. Actually cut a little bit off, pull it through the overlocker, and it would give you a really, really thin, beautiful, tiny rolled hem kind of zigzag. Um, so that's what I would normally do. The reason why there's lots of overlocking, well, there isn't necessarily overlocking throughout the book. A lot of the seams are zigzag because it's meant to be the easy guy to dress making. So not all of us have got an overlocker. So if you don't have an overlocker, you can always try a rolled hem foot and you can try different feet on your sewing machine to see how you get on with actually getting that little bit done. So give it a go, see how you feel, but it's a rolled hem if you're going to actually do it on a sewing machine. I'm just gonna see if I can get this other light on because as it gets dark, let's see if this one will work. As it gets dark, it is definitely gonna get a little bit darker in here. And that worked earlier when I tried it all. Typical. Nope. Isn't that sod's law when that happens? Hang on a sec. Is it gonna work now? Yay, okay, there's a bit more light, fabulous. Okay, so I hope that helps on that little side. How do you get the butterfly sleeve to lay flat? Well, you don't actually want the sleeve to lay flat because the whole point of the butterfly sleeve is when it's quite short like this, the whole point is it is like the wings of a butterfly. So it is meant to be a nice kind of floaty effect. So on the top that I did in the book, I've actually put two layers and that looks really, really beautiful together. So have fun with a butterfly sleeve. But if you make the butterfly sleeve longer, then it will obviously sit over your shoulder and it all depends how much you're you're flaring the actual pattern piece out. So it's always good just doing a little sample and having a play with that. And what else loves you next year? I will get them in the diary next year. There's a lot of thought going into next year at the moment, so bear with me because there's so much I need to think about and, and to plan ahead. Um, what else in there? From Yovi and Nikki, hopefully we'll see you there as well, then that'll be really good. Um, next thing else I'm gonna talk about on here is, I got here on moving the darts. I'm going to do a little demonstration on moving the darts in a little bit. But what I just wanted to do before we kind of get into that, I'm hoping this is going to work. Fingers crossed. Now, there are some really, really lovely um, photos that have come, come through on Facebook. So I just thought I'd share them within here. So everyone, hopefully, you shared it within the group. This is only going within the group itself. Um, but I'm hoping that I can actually just show what a few people have done on the group, especially for those who are new. So hopefully you can see that, fingers crossed. It's gonna work, I think my laptop's a little bit behind. So there's some really, really beautiful dresses that have been created and I'm really looking forward to doing a denim version here. You've got Susie in her lovely, lovely dress. Now this one I wanted to mention because what I love about what Susie's done in this actual shot is is she actually learned how to adjust someone else's pattern. So if you have a look at Susie's post within the group, it's fantastic because she's actually managed to take in um, a dress to actually just give her that little bit more shape. So even if you're not necessarily wanting to make the dresses within the book, understanding the process of actually being able to alter and take in is what this book is teaching you. It's giving you the basics for dressmaking and the tools to be able to adapt other patterns as well. So I want to say a massive well done to Susie for doing that. It's brilliant. We've also got Mags here as well. So absolutely love this dress. So well done, Mags. Love the pattern. So that is your either round neck or boat neck. Can't quite see from there, but it's got the uh, pleated skirt and a really lovely sleeve. So fabulous. 
Next one is Joan. So absolutely love the colour on this, Joan. Well done. Looks really, really fantastic. And what I love is, is you, you've got the Empire line with the A-line skirt, pockets and a V-neck. And just a couple of errors, but got there in the end. So it's really, really good just to keep on trying and just think your fabrics really make your dress as well. Now this is uh, lovely Rosanna. So Rosanna's actually doing the course with me in Swansea and she's on the seven week course. And each time we finish the course, she goes home and starts pattern cutting for her daughter as well. So she's absolutely fantastic. And she's always, she's making her toile in the floral fabrics, which is quite exciting. So um, we'll actually have a finished dress before everyone else is there and a matching headband, which I absolutely love. So well done, Rosanna. And who else did I have to show you? Now, Mary, special mention to Mary, because Mary has asked for help in the past when we've done the Facebook Lives. And I'm so, so impressed that she shared a picture today of her dress. And I can see as well that I think she's taken out the waist seam as well. Mary, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but Mary's taken out the waist seam, which is absolutely brilliant. And therefore, she's been able to use the whole length of that pattern and the stripe running down, which is brilliant, and still got the A-line skirt. So huge congratulations. And you may recognise this lady, Sarah. Um, so Sarah has got, um, I think, I don't know how many dresses you're on now, Sarah. I think it's on about five or six. And what I love that Sarah is just really having fun adapting all these dresses. So this dress was the top, which I'm going to show you how to move the dart in a little bit. This was the top with a dart pivoted and moved away from the shoulder and then just a little bit shorter actually under the bust with that lovely gathered skirt and pockets and just enough of a small sleeve just to complete it. So just amazing. Well done for having the confidence to just rework that as well, which is absolutely brilliant. And then we have two more. So Sue, so Sue, I love again, Sue had a little go doing the top and has gone for a little bit of a flared top and played around with the bust start. Um, and what I love again, is she's just gone, it's just totally changed the style. So you don't have to be making things that are really, really fitted to you. You can make things that are a bit looser and a more comfortable fit. And again, I'm gonna talk through darts with you in a little sec as well. And last but not least, I love this one. So Pauline, Pauline shared her, um, the top that she'd actually adapted. So if, if you can see, she's actually sewn the darts in the bottom, uh, of the kind of the waist up to the bust with the dart. So she's got that little bit of shape rather than the last photo we just shared. But then also done the puff sleeves with a little cuff on and a stand collar and it's just fab. So I'm really, really impressed. So well, well done. Really, really just amazing to see. So I think each week I'm gonna hopefully share um, a little bit more of what everyone's doing. So feel free to share your photos on the page and then I can talk about them as well and, and just cover what you're, you've all been doing. Um, so the other picture I wanted to, to show you, now I know it works, which is very exciting. Um, I said I'd cover a couple of the ones that people talked about today. So this is, I'm going to just pop this straight on. So this is Heather. Now Heather was asking about the top of the back. So what I had planned to do, which I'm annoyed I haven't yet because I was in a bit of a rush earlier, but, um, I was just going to show you how we can actually take in a little bit of the back pattern here. So as you can see, Heather was asking about the top back neck. And if you can see, it's a little bit full just in the center where the zip is, just below the neck there. And Heather was wondering where you needed to uh, do darts or anything like that. But all you actually need to do is just curve, take a little bit off that center back up on the neck because we don't all have a dead straight back. So even though the pattern for the back isn't dead straight, but there's a little bit of a curve to it you can absolutely curve that centre back seam to fit your back. So you don't have to worry about darts in the neckline or darts in the shoulder, just curving that in slightly because that is usually where you have a zip or you would have a seam anyway, so it doesn't have to be a straight line. So Heather had a little go, took that in and just pinned it in and it made a massive difference. So hopefully that's quite useful for some of you who are wondering how that works. So I'm gonna come back to me now. And I'm just gonna have a look at this little list and see what we're gonna do. So, just gone through the center back one. Um, I'm gonna little do, main bit I'm gonna demo today is actually moving the dart and the fact that the dart's quite wide on the front shoulder. And what I'm also going to do is have a little look at the gaping back because some people um, have also had the problem where right on the lower part of the back, so when you are looking right down here and trying to get that fit, under there 
sometimes they're quite quite baggy so I'm just going to show you how to actually alter that quite simply so you'll have a couple of tips with that visually in a sec for like the second half of this this live so at least I'll do a little little practical session with you um, I'm just gonna have a look at comments as well. So Margaret, if any of you have missed this, it will be it will remain on the page, and I'll pop it in the featured part where lots of all the Facebook lives have been on up till now as well. And here's the issue is chest, fidget in decent, find in decent fit. Um, okay, what what is interesting is with the actual fit as well. For those of you that are worried, especially about the bust, this is why I'm going to talk about the bust start in a sec. Um, one picture that I don't know, I thought it was on here, but I obviously haven't added it. Um, there was one picture of a lady who'd actually used the pattern and is very used to doing full bust alterations. And I think it was Jenny. So I'd really love to see how Jenny's got on with her, her bodies now to see how that's working. Because the theory of this is a little bit different. So usually you do a full bust alteration if you've got a shop bought pattern and it doesn't fit your bust because obviously your bust is different to your waist. And that's when people tend to do a full bust alteration because you're working with an existing pattern to alter it and make that bust bigger. Now, the way this book is working is just a little bit different. So you actually go back to actually getting your, your sample to fit you. And if you've put fabric, you put your toile against you as long as you fit this biggest part of your bust around here. So when you're actually taking your measurements, you want that to fit you around the largest part. Once you've got that measurement there, you can then start to adjust what you need to do on the shoulders. If you need to make it longer on your bodice from your bust point to your shoulder, then by all means, add extra into your shoulder point there. And this is the beauty of working on a paper pattern. You've got the option to really manipulate your pattern piece. While Whilst it's quite simple, while it's it's in front of you and it's flat, that's the beauty of this book. So those of you that do struggle sometimes with having it, maybe it's not long enough here, or maybe you need to take it in a little bit more. Again, you can actually just shape underneath. You can see even on this dress, there's room for me to really manipulate and to really shape, if I go from my angle there, to really shape this dress in. But it's your choice. It's how you want to make your outfit fit you and how you want it to actually be comfortable, whether you want it really fitted or sculpted. You have the whole just run of what you can do once you get this block to fit you as simply as possible. The other thing I'm going to tell you all, it's very exciting. I was hoping to share a video now, but it hasn't actually downloaded. So the the since the book has kind of been up and running, it's obviously been two months of absolute chaos. I've got an itchy nose tonight. Um, it has been absolute chaos because uh, the book has come out and it, it's just been absolutely fantastic and, and people have obviously been really running with it. And the group has grown from just naught to 6,000 in two months, which is incredible. So I've done my, my best to try and do some Facebook lives up till now, which is hopefully addressing some of those fit issues, etc. But the good news is, what I'm planning to do in the background is to actually get some free videos, which I'm currently filming with lovely, lovely Charlotte. Charlotte is amazing. She's actually in the book. So if you look at the pattern tester page, now this is where I can get quite fancy, actually. This is where I need to see if this is going to work. So I'm going to go onto my switch page and we're going to get both of these. Oh, how fancy is that? Although my head's here. I should have swapped that the other way around. I'm going to see if that'll work the other way. I don't know if that will work. Solo and that. We'll see how that works. No, I'm still the lower one, but never mind. Okay, <laughs> my head chopped off. I told you I'll get better at this each week. Um, so if you have a look through the book, you will actually see on page number seven, this beautiful lady here, Charlotte, is fantastic. Now, Charlotte is helping me do a whole load of social media. So she's just set up her own business called CT Digital. And she is just amazing. And we're doing a whole load of fantastic videos that we're going to do that are going to be free and within the group. So for anyone actually with the book and actually starting out, this is what we're going to be doing. Um, so that actually gets you up and running with the book. So once we've got those basics, I think I had a list. I'm going to run through what we're doing. Where was it? So Charlotte will laugh at me now because I put it all in the, hidden it all away. So what we're actually doing is 
we've we've done videos and we're going to be editing them so you all have access to this so it's something that you can have in a, in a proper library within the group that you can actually have a look at and hopefully help you in this initial stage so we've done a video of measure measure in charlotte to show you how the best way to measure is we have then done a video on tracing your patterns and how you work between sizes so that is due to be edited I've also done a video on how you make your patterns petite, so if you need to take the length out of your patterns, but also if you're tall, how you add length into the bodice patterns as well. So those videos are almost ready. I've also done a video on seam allowance and showing you how to use this special tool, Pattern Master. This is like one of my favourite, favourite tools. Absolutely brilliant. So there's a little video for that ready as well. Um, that hopefully will be posted this week. Also during the workshops that I'm running, Charlotte has come along and she's been filming the fittings that we've been doing. So six ladies are attending the course and we've actually filmed most of them actually when I've altered them. So that will be really good for you all to see, hopefully. So if you're at the early stages and you're worrying, don't worry, just give me a couple of weeks and then we'll get those videos up and running. And that should get you to the very first stage of having your toile and then everything should be much easier for you. So lots to come for there. Then I'll be doing transfer and alteration. So again, rather than me demonstrate all of that tonight, there is a video coming. <laughs> there are how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight videos coming. And transfer and alterations is one of those as well. Also the centre bust alterations. So if you need to take out fullness from the centre bust, that is something where unfortunately I had to lose some photos in the book and it was really difficult to try and get the photos that we needed in there. So there will be a little video on that. And there is a fantastic eight minute video on how to alter the gape in armhole because that is something that can happen on lots of people. So if you're at that stage and you're struggling, the gape in armhole and how to add the seam allowance will be coming out in the next week. So keep an eye out for that. And the others will be coming live following on from that. Once they're all out, that should give you the tools to get you up and running. And then once you have everything set to make your toile, then I will be doing lots and lots of videos and more in-depth, longer videos. And these will end up being in my website. So that will be possibly like a members area that we'll be doing. So the book should be enough to get you up and running. But if you're a visual learner and you need that one-to-one, -one, then that is the plan. So there'll be like a members area where you can get access to full videos and just lots more help. Um, because obviously filming takes a lot, a lot of time, um, time, money and everything that goes with that. So there's been a lot going on up here and I'm thinking it through. So we've decided that these first eight, it'll be eight or nine videos will be free to everybody to be able to access to get you all up and running. So I will demo a little bit tonight, but actually looking at the videos earlier, I think you'll get a lot more from watching those and saving those so you can watch them again and again, because I really covered quite a lot of detail in them. So hopefully that will help. Now, just going to go back to any comments. Oh, Margaret, wow, you're amazing. Thank you so much. So yes, I have been busy. Very, <laughs> very, very, very busy. Um, keep your comments coming because I will try and have a little read through and hopefully try and answer some things there as well. So there is a lot happening. It's all very exciting. And yeah, I'm just absolutely loving it. Um, oh, Susan, that's lovely. Can't believe the support you're giving us. It is, a, it is a bit of a strange concept. Let me just take it back off that. Actually, we go here. So it is a little bit of a very different because I think when you when I wrote my last book I wrote the book and Search Press obviously pushed it and publicized it and I was so busy I kind of didn't get a chance to do much with the book and that is called So Perfect Pets which is in the front a very very different book to this and then when I decided then to do the dressmaking book for me it's everything it's everything I do it's everything I'm passionate about it's everything I love doing and I love teaching dressmaking and I love the fact that this book has really I think the biggest thing is light bulb moments is people have gone, oh, I get it. And now I can alter other patterns on my own clothes. So it makes sense to me to just put all my energy into this because this is this is my passion. It took four years to write this. Obviously, there was COVID in that. Um, I had my little boy who was born just before lockdown, had a serious heart condition. He had open heart surgery at 10 days old. And I think three weeks later, we were in lockdown with COVID. So this is why the book has taken so long, but it is a labour of love. It literally is just everything that I love in a book. And so, of course, I'm going to do as much as I can to get you all up and running. So 
yeah, just stick with me. There's lots going on. And Search Press are fantastic publishers. They are 100% behind me and supportive. And it's just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So what we're going to do now, enough of me talking, I'm just going to get some paper because I have to admit I didn't do my homework and I didn't trace a block off. So I'm going to do that really quickly for you to watch. And I'm just going just to trace off the front block and the back bodice front and back bodice from the blocks so that you can actually see how that works. So bear with me, I'm going to move this block away and get all of this out. And what we'll do, we'll put the camera from above and we'll just trace this out really quickly. So I'm just going to get the patterns out. My fault, I chose to go and pick, um, pick my son up from school so Totally missed this. Uh, well done, book. Oh, inclusive side. Absolutely, yes. It has to be inclusive. You might have noticed, but I, I'm 5'11", and so I've got curves, and I had curves before I had my son. But as soon as I had my son, my body changed, everything changed, and I've got even more curves than I had last time. So obviously, your body changes, and you really want to get just clothes that fit you and I get massively frustrated as soon as I try and get any clothes that fit me in the high street because they just don't and so this is the whole point of actually teaching you how to do this yourself so what I'm going to do is love I can say I'm a size 10 Joan absolutely now something I didn't put in the book because I didn't want to get sued was that um Joan Collins apparently in her um in her clothes she used to get all her clothes made and then she would actually get a size 10, size 10 label sewn into her clothes, even if she was, say, a 16. So that always made me laugh because you think, you know, you don't, it's psychological. And the reason why there's a bespoke size chart in there is because it's that idea of it's so confusing when you're looking between UK, EU. Let me just put the screen on here. Hang on so you can actually see what I'm doing here. So there's like EU, there's US, there's UK sizing and... It's just massively complicated and it's about time that there was just one size chart for everybody and so that is what I am doing. And I'm just going to tilt this hopefully so you can see a little bit more of this. Now we're just going to do this really quick. This is very much like a quick little masterclass of how to do this. Um, menopause cause some dreadful changes. Yeah, that, I, I hear a lot about that as well. Um, thank you for sharing your passion writing the book. Can't wait to get my perfect fit. I really hope you do. Oh, what's that? I see HF won't let me, but workshop won't let me book workshop tickets to Birmingham. They haven't gone live to Birmingham yet, so hopefully they will come live very soon. Fingers crossed. I will check because they're about to go live, Belinda. So bear with me on that. I think they're literally about to go live in this next day, I think. Right, so I'm gonna trace off the smaller size on here, which is this is a little bit of a masterclass. So this is literally the smaller size I'm going to do just to be quick on here. So what you are doing, I'm going to make sure my head isn't in screen here. Now, the other exciting news is that I'm building a lovely fancy studio in my, in my garden, which is something that we plan to do for the last four years. And planning, we don't talk about planning at the moment because it's still... It added a few years onto our actual actual plan of building, but as soon as I get that up and running, there'll be a lot of me doing like having a filming area, so there'll be a lot more room to actually film and do some the online sessions that I've wanted to do. Fingers crossed. Now I'm doing a very quick way here, I'm just doing lots of dashes, and the reason why I use this paper because I prefer to actually have the dot and cross so that. I can use the plain side when I don't need the dot and cross. And then when I do need the dot and cross, I can flip it over. And for me, I can see through, but for some people struggle and they use maybe some prim. The prim paper is always quite useful as well. Now, unfortunately, there is a shadow in here, but this is the joy of having so many lights set up. So all I'm doing, I'm just going around the whole of the block and then I'm gonna mark where the where the darts are. So any point, and I've done this in a few Facebook lives, which is why I'm doing it quite quickly for a minute. You can go back and you can watch any of the previous Facebook lives where I've done this in a little bit more detail. And again, as I say, there, there are videos which are all being filmed as we speak. Uh, not filmed, edited. 
Oh, I've just done the wrong dart there. So that is the dart. And because obviously I'm running the course at the moment, it allows me to really find out what parts people need help with as well. So this is where the videos are all proven to be really knowledgeable, hopefully, for you all. Um, I was going to say, Jennifer, my daughter missed the day and um, I told her I'm a size 11. She laughed and said I got it wrong. Ah, little does she know. I love that. Brilliant. Um, right. So when you're actually marking all of these patterns, what you need to do, this is size one. So I've just gone for the teeniest, tiniest one on here just to do a nice quick demo. So when you've got all of your, your bodice drawn out, mark your centre front. So you've got all of the markings on here that you need to know. Um, any notches that you have on here, you need to mark those on as well. And it's all explained in the book. So if you're watching this for the first time, wondering what on earth is going on, don't worry about it. Um, I say everything's in the book. There's lots and lots of useful tips in there as well to show you how this all works. So don't be put off by it. Now I'm conscious that this arm is casting a shadow, but don't actually know I can get rid of that for a minute. Um, which you a homemade light box. Jennifer, that's amazing. Your husband made a homemade light box. That is always good. Oh yes, Pattern Master. Okay, so Pattern Master is better than a French curve. The reason why I love a Pattern Master, there is a video for this as well, is because if you want to add seam allowance on, you've got straight here and you've got, you can have it in metric and imperial. Now you can actually add on you see here you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I use it mainly to add a centimetre seam allowance on when I'm drawing my facings. But you also have the curves are in here and around here, which help you do the curves, which a French curve does. But say I was going to add seam allowance to the armhole now, it actually allows you to use the inside of the curve. So this is what the video that's coming out this week is talking about how to use the Pattern Master in that way. So lots of fun stuff coming your way. Now then, I talked about, I said, the gaping armhole. So what I would just like to do is something just very quick. I'm just wondering. Let me just grab. So what I want to just show you is the dart itself here and why I've gone for the shoulder dart. I've talked about this a couple of times. And this is really showing you, those of you who have asked about how you can actually play with darts. So this is a little bit advanced for those of you that are brand new, but I say I'll be, I'll be following up with all the other videos very, very soon. Um, but when you actually do a gaping armhole, what you do is you, you actually move the fullness of a gaping armhole and you actually move a dart into another dart. So those of you who've been asking about a dart, I'm gonna show you just a very little, like this is a real treat, this one, okay? This is slightly advanced. So those of you who are new to it, don't worry about it. I'm gonna cut this out without seam allowance and I'm just gonna show you how pattern cutting can be really magical for you all. I'll just show you this. So I should have done this beforehand, a bit blue Peter-esque, but never mind. So as I said, I've done quite a few of these before now anyway. So if you look at any of the previous Facebook Lives, I've talked about I think I've traced off a pattern. Um, I've shown how to do quite a few techniques in them. So feel free to go back and it's in featured at the top of the page. And eventually when we get these new videos in, they'll all actually be categorised in there. So that's quite exciting. You'll be able to see them all. So if some of you are thinking you don't like the shoulder dart, this is my main reason for doing this because it's it's not my favourite thing. Shoulder dart isn't my favourite thing at all and darts are not my favourite thing, if I'm totally honest. But because it is the basic, like the easy guide to dressmaking, what you need to bear in mind is that there are certain things that I had to keep quite simple with this because otherwise it gets too complicated and it couldn't ever be called the easy guide to dressmaking. So there hopefully will be more books coming from here, which will be the next stage up. So what I just want to show you is just a little bit of exciting how this works here. So, oh, my scissors are so sharp. These are actually my best um, paper scissors. These are Fiskars and these, I can't get them wholesale at all. Otherwise I'd have them on the website, but Fiskars paper scissors 
are my favourite for cutting paper. And I think I've got all that listed on the website, I think. Um, yeah, so don't worry. If those of you are looking as a total beginner, don't see this as... There's too much. I can't show you everything and how to set this up. So who's asking now? Uh, Renata, sorry if I've said your name wrong. When you draw the pattern, you decide you don't have seam allowance. Wait for those videos that are due to be coming out in the next fortnight. So wait for those that will be showing you all of the stages how to get there. So this is a little bit of an extra kind of thing to show you because this is a bit of a like a, a treat video really and what I'm going to show for those people that don't like the shoulder dart um it's not featured in the book but it's just showing you how pattern cutting some, can work now this is actually demonstrated in the book so I'm going to show you so you can see I'm going to say the videos I promise you are going to be so good because I've already got a gaping armhole one is fantastic so at the back of the book there is a section on the book which talks about separates and what it gets you to do in this section of the book is to actually move that shoulder dart into the waist dart. So that's where the photos I showed you earlier of the tops actually don't have that shoulder dart because it can look quite ugly. Um, the beauty of having the, the dart that runs from the shoulder down to the waist is if you do my cheat method, which is much further back in the book, this is my little cheat method 68. The continual dart means it looks like you've just got a really nice neat line running through from your shoulder to your waist. So that's why I do that. If you prefer your dart to go somewhere else other than your shoulder, you can follow page 154, which is on about separates, and you actually remove the dart from the shoulder. And for this one, it goes into the waist. And I'm just going to demonstrate how that works, because for those of you that are making things and maybe put off by the fact that you don't like the shoulder dart, the reason why it's there is because I needed to keep the waist dart the same size as the waist dart on the skirt. So like Mary's dress earlier, then you can just totally take out your, your waistline seam, which is really good. So this is why I don't play with this when you're just working on the top. Now, if you want, for example, those who are thinking you much prefer a dart to go into your armhole, then what I'm going to show you is how to do that. So, yes, more books. Bear with me. Yay, next book. Yes, oh, there's lots to come. Uh, what I do with this is I get you to mark in between the centre of the dart. So this is here. We actually draw a line right through the centre of the dart here and we extend it to the bust point. So with your darts, your dart should always sit two centimetres either side of your bust point. If you do your cheat dart, you actually just run that line all the way through and it becomes looks like a continual seam. The next book will be how you separate those out. So bear with me. Now, if you want your dart, so you don't like that shoulder dart, and if that is offensive, because some people it is having a dart that big up there, you can move it. So you can actually say, I want my dart to come into my armhole instead and what we're actually going to do and show you how that works just to run through I've just drawn a center line all the way through there and that's meeting at this point I've then said well I actually want my dart to run into here so what I'm going to do I am going to cut I didn't actually need to draw that center line I don't think you actually cut along down to that point right down there and this is how you move this fullness of a dart. So we actually go into, with your shoulder dart, we close your shoulder dart. And you run that, you need to get a nice point down here. Flatten all that out. I've done a very good job of that, unfortunately. But what you then do, need to cut that a little bit further down. What you actually do then is that shoulder dart has now become, this really large shoulder dart has actually closed and has created a dart which is now going to run into your armhole. So if you then choose to have your dart running from there instead, I'd get all of your fitting perfected before you do this. So this is definitely a step ahead for those of you. But if you are at that stage, you want to advance and you want to remove that shoulder dart, it can go anywhere. So it can go into your side seam. Um, it can all go into this lower part as well. So all it is, is wherever you want your dart to go, you actually, you extend this line all the way down so that it's easier for you to actually close the dart and fold it. 
and then you just cut the line where you want your new dart to go and it's that simple you just fold it a little bit better than I did and that is how you move a dart so this is pattern cutting this is just simple very very clever very very easy um, how do you decide where to draw the dart? Gillian, you draw the dart wherever you want. So say if you didn't want the dart there, I could have drawn the dart. It needs to still go to your bus point. So you do still need to draw that in, but you could draw that anywhere. You could draw it into your side. You can draw it at 90 degrees, but it gives you quite a sharp kind of corner then. So this is quite a nice angle. But if you also wanted to move your dart, so say you want to keep the shoulder dart, but if you're finding that the dart isn't quite sitting right, so say if your bust, so your bust point is here, if you're finding when you've got your toile on you that your bust is sitting a little bit maybe too far this way, you can either literally just redraw your dart slightly further over, so you literally just trace the whole thing and shift it over maybe by a centimetre. Or if you really want to, you can actually do this method. And if you'd rather your dart go at a slightly different angle, then it's a case of drawing the line where you want to move your dart into. So it's really very, very simple, very, very clever. So how to make the armhole smaller. Sue, so don't believe it worked, it tried. Um, how does it get rid of gaping armhole? So the, what, wait for the gaping armhole video, okay? So what I want to show you is, um, once you've got the gaping armhole video, it will all make sense a lot better than what I've just done there. So this is just a very quick one for those of you that are advancing and wondering how you can actually adapt. Um, but that is what pattern cutter can allow you to do. It can allow you to move darts. It can allow you to just manipulate and play with your actual pattern pieces themselves. So the gaping armhole is how you all, you take the fullness out of a out of under the arm and there's a full video coming eight minutes of that and then also if you want to move your shoulder dart if you don't like it then that is how you do that there now the one thing i want to do before we finish is i just want to show you a how to take fullness out as well what i might have to do rather than trace off the whole back piece for this um and i don't really want to waste a bit of time doing that i'm just going to go back into this being the main picture so in the book itself it talks about, let me just see what else you put in. Yeah, would it be good to move the dart for a boat line neck? Yes, personally, it's a nicer finish if you move the dart. But again, the reason why it's in there is because the book is called The Easy Guide to Dressmaking. So there is so much I can teach you all. Let me put it back on there for a second. So much I can teach you all about pattern cutting but you need to get the basics done first. So the reason why that dart is there running through is because once you've got basics, you've got it to fit you. You can then cheat and kind of, you know, jump ahead by using the methods that I've just talked about here. So it's, it is very much an advanced method, but it is in the book. It's in the gap gaping harm hook. I can't speak now, the gaping armhole, and it's also on the top separate page. So it's there, but you just need to know what that means as well. So that's why I just added that in to just give those of you a little bit of a helping hand with it. Um, gaping armhole Janet watch out for that video coming this week it is fantastic it's got everything in the video and it also talks about if you um, let me go back to that so if you are struggling and your armhole is actually sitting a bit further in there I cover all of that with you so just hold your horses wait for that I promise it'll be worth it now what I just wanted to talk about is on the back bodice, so I think we'll have to do a little bit of imagination here, okay? So imagine you've got the back bodice. What I'm finding is a lot of people, I'm going to go back to me for a sec, a lot of people, like I said to you earlier, are struggling with all this fullness that's actually on the back there. And it almost looks like you just want to take a little wedge out of the back. So what I just want to show you is imagine this is the back. We go back onto there. Imagine this is the back and you've got all this fullness. So what you just need to do, it's actually totally okay if you've got a lot of fullness in the centre back seam, you would actually take it out on the calico itself, but it's okay if it, you haven't got any fullness in the side seam, you can literally just fold out some of that fullness, almost by kind of creating this little bit. Now what you can see there, hopefully through here, is that you are taking out some of the fullness that's actually in the centre back seam, but you're taking it to nothing at the side seam and that will help you get rid of that kind of what people have is that chunk of fullness that's sitting just above your waist um, and making your back seem a little bit too full so you are literally on your, your calico sample you would just take that fullness out and pinch it in and then you just repeat that exact method so you're pretty much creating like a little dart and you just flatten it all out because you want your pattern to sit flat 
and then you would just need to redraw you can see you've got a little bit of a wonky line there and you've got a little bit of a wonky line there so all you would need to do is redraw that as a straight line redraw that as a state straight line and just redraw your darts as well so you would just redraw your dart down here so that you still have your dart the same place because the massive thing that's really important in the book is you still have your dart in the same position here but when that actually fits your body you'll find that taking that little bit out of there means it's much easier than taking it out of here so hopefully that is something that might help quite a lot of you because I'm seeing that quite often on there um so Jill yeah if you found that as well in your back bodice um yeah hopefully that will help as well so I've seen lots of pictures um, popping up as well of people's trials so if at any point I can let's come back to this if there's any point I can comment and help you on on the Facebook group I will but as I said, bear in mind, I've got a three-year-old and running a business and packing lots of lovely orders, which is fabulous. Um, lots of tools and equipment and paper and calico and things like that. So just bear with me because I am a team of one. Um, my partner is roped in. He is a chief book packer, <laughs> which is pretty good. Uh, Morgan, my three-year-old, is chief book checker before they go to the post office. Um, but it is just myself, and which is great. And you know, I'm absolutely loving the fact that this is just me, and it, and it's a very small team. But it just means it's very personal, and you may not receive your orders the next day, like Amazon, but you will receive them, and they will have been packed with tender loving care, and also just with a little skip and happy dance every time you get an order. So, when in between all of that, as soon as I can comment and help you out, I, I will. But obviously, you've all been amazing helping each other, and I absolutely love it. Um, so I'm just going to see that's a problem. Brilliant. Yeah, so hopefully those of you that are joining a bit later, just watch it all back. Um, as I said, I was going to do a lot more of a practical video this evening, but after running through the videos and seeing the edited videos that we're actually very close to posting, it made more sense to just do very, very basic alterations here and then to get you excited that you're going to have some lovely free videos to help you get to this stage. And... Yeah, hopefully get you to the twirl stage, which is going to help you all progress, which is really cool. Um, so Julia, I'm glad you're happy with the dart explanation. Um, oh, and another Julia, looking forward to getting your book. Winter fabric, Sarah, I've just seen your little bit post up. So Sarah, um, what? Oh gosh, if I, I need to have two weeks off because I'm jealous of your wardrobe, Sarah, at the moment. So what I am planning to do is, in between everything I need to do, I would love to make myself some more dresses and I'd like to film this process as well. So lots of different types of dresses. Um, I absolutely adore, as you can probably tell from this, absolutely adore denim. And denim is like my fabric. So this dress, I don't know if you can see, probably can stand back. This dress is, it has pockets. I absolutely love it. It's longer than my knees, so it's not knee length, it's a lot, lot longer. It's got the really simple pockets, which is super, super easy. And it's just post having a baby, just nice and flattering. It gives me this, this little bit of waist detail, pleats, the sweetheart neckline. I've gone without sleeves for this one, but I absolutely love denim. So if you're looking for winter fabrics, all of your dresses can go from a summer dress through to a winter as well. So you can look at some wool fabrics. Um, I've got a beautiful black dress that I can't fit since having Morgan but a really beautiful black woolen dress, which is so simple. It is literally, um, I think it's a boat neck one. It's got a slight round neck and it's just, it's very simple. There's no sleeves, it's in, it's got the circle skirt lower half, which you can wear with an underskirt or without. And honestly, it's just, you dress it up. You put boots on, you put tights on, you put big necklace, pair of earrings, anything. And it's just so simple and you can layer up. So these dresses aren't just for summer. Just think of your fabrics and hopefully, 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 um, oh, is that? hopefully there's lots of things within the group because the group is growing so massively as well. I'm trying to work out who I can kind of contact and work with to hopefully give you all in the group some kind of benefits of being part of the group, some advice on fabrics, um, just lots of little things. So bear with me. There's so much bubbling, so much bubbling. Um, now, how many meters of fabric did that take, Sharon? I don't actually know, but thinking about it, um, someone did ask, so before we finish like for tonight, someone did ask about fabric. So there isn't a part in the book which actually tells you how much fabric you need per dress because 
the dresses are so unique to you, your size, what features you mix and match with them. It's really hard to say what you need. Um, but I will possibly do a little live on how you actually work out your fabric choices and, and your lay plan, if what it's called. But if you think if you've got quite a straight dress and you, you're quite a small size, then you could probably get away with a metre and a half of fabric. If you go for a really full like circle skirt, more than knee length, go for big sleeve, then you could potentially, depending on the width of your fabric, need to be looking at four and a half to six metres. So it really is a case of create your block, create your patterns, and ideally then pick your fabrics. So this wouldn't have taken much for the bodice, but the skirt has probably taken about, it's about a metre long, the whole width of the fabric, so at least two to three metres probably, but well, three, three and a half, so hope that helps. Um, la la la, hope that let me also give you support and time. Love my necklace, yes, and my necklace, I do love my necklace. Um, I get them from, there's a really fabulous uh, company called, I think she's called Eclect eclectic mix I can never say this properly um hopefully I'll find her link and I can share it because I absolutely adore costume jewelry and that again make a simple dress and have so much fun with it so if anyone's got any last minute questions I'm just over the hour mark so if anybody's got something um they want to ask ask it quick um because I'm going to sign out for now but as I said I will try and plan another Facebook live in hopefully next week fingers crossed it all depends how busy life is with school holidays three-year-olds running a business etc but i'm hoping to do something um but yeah any other questions fire them over i think it's still working but i hopefully hopefully it's been useful but i think it's more of a bit of an update for you tonight as well just to show you that there's a lot going on in the background and just wait for these videos because this will get you all up and running those i think almost 500 of you that are buy have bought books through myself which is incredible um, when you get your books mid-September, as soon as you get them, then you'll have those videos by then, hopefully. And that will just get you all up and running. So just, yeah, there's lots going on. Thank you for being on the dressmaking journey and just enjoying it. And these Facebook Lives are all about, I think, interacting with you all. If you've got any questions, fire them over. And before I do a Facebook Live, I'll ask if anyone's struggling with anything in particular. And if you're happy for me to share the photos like I did earlier, then that worked really well tonight. And more than happy to do that. So um mid-september how long i send the books out second class royal mail so that it keeps the cost down with postage because otherwise it's through the roof so they go out second class and as soon as i get them signed you should get a completed order email but for some reason the emails aren't getting through to you which is really frustrating it's an automated email don't know what's going on there but i will complete the order but they will be coming out to you so as soon as the books come in keep an eye on social media and i'll do a little post for you all um looking forward to videos thank you thank you i'm so glad you're enjoying um as i said this live is just a chance for me to talk to you all and it's all evolving so just before i go just the last kind of minute is that there's no rules for a Facebook group that I'm aware of. I've literally set this group up thinking, let's keep everybody under one roof. And all of a sudden there's almost 6,000 members of you, which is incredible. And you're all over the world, which I absolutely love. And that is the last thing I was gonna talk about actually. Um, those of you who are arranging meetups, that is amazing. I'm so excited that so many of you that are connecting within the group. So I might do a little post at some point to kind of see if any of you are still struggling to meet someone within the UK or wherever you are. So maybe we can post about it and find those of you who are near each other because it massively helps if you've got somebody to help fit you and encourage you and give you that kind of words of wisdom that you might need at this early stage. So there's lots of help and support and this is what this group is all about. So just please keep supporting each other. Please follow in this journey, this crazy journey of dressmaking the easy guide and hopefully there'll be just so much more I can give you and share with you as time goes on. Um, so yeah, that's me done. And... Thank you for your precious time. I'm going to go in now and uh, it's just getting darker and darker, isn't it? So thank you for watching. Um, this was a bit of a test of the equipment all worked because last this is new now. So the fact this has all worked, it means that next time I can do bigger and better because I've sussed it now, which is good. So look out for the next one and I'll do a little bit more technical pattern cutting now that I know that it works from above. I can swap and I've even got a little fancy screen that just says thank you for watching. How exciting. So thank you all and I really look forward to seeing what you do what you will do and create post your pictures online. Don't be afraid to share your photo. 
because that's how we can help. So thank you all. And I look forward to speaking to you for the next Facebook Live. Take care, everybody. And I've got to figure out how to end it. I never know. <laughs> Thanks.